Schumer, Senators Baldwin, Blumenthal, and Murray, and a number of my colleagues in introducing a piece of legislation that is urgently needed. It's entitled the Women's Health Protection Act of 2023. This bill would protect the right to obtain and provide reproductive health care, as basic as anything in America, as well as the freedom of Americans to seek this care free of medically unnecessary restrictions or limitations as to where a patient can receive it. It's been about nine months since the Thomas Alito Court ripped away this fundamental right in America and put a target on the backs of women and health care providers across the country. Since then, we've heard one horror story after another. Stories of rape victims as young as 10 years old who've been forced to travel across state lines to receive critical health care. Stories of women who are suffering miscarriages but still have been denied care by doctors in red states where the doctors are afraid of being charged with a crime. Stories of women who've been abandoned by their state's leaders, many of whom have found refuge in the state of Illinois. Despite these stories of girls and women who've been denied critical health care because of partisan politics, Republicans are continuing to push dangerous abortion bans and restrictions. These politicians think they know better than the women who are affected by these decisions and their doctors. Beware of the moment when legislators start playing doctor. They're doing it all across America on this issue. They're wrong. We need to respect the freedom and right of women and the expertise of their medical professionals, period. And we need to recognize that politicians have no business in the hospital room or the doctor's office. There should be a matter of privacy and respect that should be guiding our policy. If we want to defend freedom and fundamental rights in America, we need to pass the Women's Health Protection Act. The debate has even gone so far as to affect the corner drugstore. This week I was on the phone with the CEO of Walgreens, an Illinois-based company, one of the largest pharmacy companies in the United States of America. They are torn currently by an announcement of policy earlier this week which generated a lot of controversy. Whether or not they will dispense medications which are used to end a pregnancy. I begged of them to at least wait until this issue has become clearer in the courts before taking a corporate position. The other major pharmacy chains are making the same decision themselves. We'll find out what they conclude. But it's an indication that this debate has gone far beyond the floor of the United States Senate in Washington. It's on your street corner. It's in your mall. It's in the shopping center that you've been going to all your life as to whether or not you can have access to a drug that was judged safe and effective 20 years ago by the federal government. That's what happens when legislators decide to be doctors. Mr. President, on another topic, when you stop by the grocery store to pick up your favorite box of cereal or some chicken breast for dinner, would you ever guess you were buying a pro product that had been produced by exploited children? Not in America. Not in 2023. Sorry. I'm afraid it's so. Last week, the New York Times ran an extremely important article about an investigation on what it deemed the new economy of exploitation. That economy is powered by young migrant children who arrived in this country without their parents and are working at unthinkably dangerous jobs in the American economy. But the exploitation is not limited to migrant children. In factories across the country, from North Carolina to South Dakota, children as young as 12 years of age, that's right, 12 years of age, are working in the dead of night in some of the most grueling environments imaginable. Freezing cold slaughterhouses, and auto part assembly plants, 
12 years old. These children work as long as 12 hours per shift. And for migrant children, many are under pressure to send money back home or to pay back the criminals who smuggled them across the border. Often these children go to school in the morning because they're trying to learn to speak English and get an education. How can you learn when you're running on no sleep? Mr. President, I have some personal familiarity with some of these working conditions. When I was a college student, I worked two, summer, two or three summers to pay my way through college. One of the jobs was on a railroad, a tradition in my family. Fortunately for me, I only have a minor scar to show from my time switching in the switchyard. But many others were not so lucky. The other job I had while I worked in college, my way through college, was in a meatpacking facility. I spent four summers there. I saw almost every aspect of that type of environment. I cannot imagine a 12-year-old in that dangerous environment. So when I hear young children are working long hours in meatpacking plants and slaughterhouses, it is beyond horrifying. It is beyond unconscionable, and it has to end. These accounts of children working in slaughterhouses and factories are not only shocking, they're blatantly unlawful in America. Our nation outlawed oppressive child labor almost 100 years ago. This is a problem that should be relegated to history books or novels by Dickens, but it's not. In fact, since 2018, there have been a nearly 70% increase in illegally employed children. When the number of children being forced to work dangerous and potentially deadly jobs is on the rise, it's clear that our child labor laws are not up to speed. And let me add the obvious. This is another condemnation of the failure of our immigration policy in America. Consider the fact that people desperately need workers, desperately. Every corner of my state of Illinois, they tell me one after the other, we need more police, we need more firefighters, we need more ambulance drivers, we need more health care workers, we need more workers in our nursing homes, on and on and on. And why are we facing these shortages? We're facing them because for four years under President Trump, we stopped allowing legal migration into the United States as we had in previous years. So fewer and fewer of these immigrant workers were available to take on jobs that Americans are not waiting in line to fill. Behind the swinging doors of most of the restaurants and some of the hotels in the city of Chicago are undocumented workers filling jobs which no one on the other side of that door would be interested in. So when we don't have a legal system to allow migration to come to this country and to fill the jobs, this is what happens. Yesterday I had a meeting with the Illinois Farm Bureau. I meet with them every year. There were about a dozen farmers from all across my state. I know politically who they are. They're great people. They're not necessarily of my political party or my political faith, but they all had the same thing. Senator, we need workers on our farms, dairy farms, livestock operations, orchards, farms that need workers every single day, and they don't have them. And they said, don't tell us that we ought to go into town and get the kids in high school to be our next generation of workers. They're just not interested and they're not filling the jobs. And if we don't fill these jobs, these conservative politically, farmers are going to find their farming operations paying a heavy price for it. Why in the world can't we acknowledge the obvious? The obvious is if we have an orderly process of screening people to come to work in the United States from various countries, we can stop seeing the onslaught of thousands coming to our border. We've already seen this happening in specific instances through the Department of Homeland Security. We ought to be enhancing it and increasing it. I joined Senator Schatz last week when it came to this issue of child exploitation. He introduced a bill which significantly expand and strengthen penalties for companies violating child labor laws. Let the word go out as clearly as it can from the floor of the United States Senate. If you have a business and you are exploiting children, you're in trouble. You're breaking the law and you're going to pay a price for it. It's just not acceptable. So don't use the excuse that you didn't know. Find out. It also would apply these penalties to independent contractors. That's really important because some employers have managed to exploit children by hiring them through staffing agencies in an effort to avoid fines. 
our bill would end this despicable practice. When a company hires little kids to work on a fast-paced assembly line, where these kids can be injured and even endanger their lives, or when a company hires children to debone chickens or inhale toxic chemicals in an auto factory, a small fine and a slap on the wrist just won't do. We need to impose serious penalties on these companies so they'll never hire exploited children again. That's what this bill wants to do. Importantly, the investigation from the New York Times illustrates that a humanitarian crisis in this country is rooted in the failure of this broken immigration system. From migrant children to farm workers to families living under the threat of deportation, there are millions of people living in the shadows in this country and being exploited right under our noses. For those who enter the United States and are allowed to legally stay until their hearing date, there is a loophole in the law which makes life for them in a legal way almost impossible. Many of these people, though legally in the United States waiting for their asylum hearing, cannot legally work in the United States, depending on their circumstances, for six months to a year. What are they supposed to do? They want to work. There are jobs that need to be filled. We should find some way to do this in an orderly fashion. The Times reporting made it clear that unaccompanied migrant children are extremely vulnerable to exploitation. That just stands to reason. And our federal agencies have to do more to protect them. Finally, I want to acknowledge <clears throat> a broader truth about the state of our economy. It's no secret that employers throughout the country are struggling to find workers in Illinois, in New Mexico, everywhere. There are 11 million job openings in America, not nearly enough workers to fill them. It's disturbing that some Republican state lawmakers have suggested loosening the child labor laws to fill these openings. To them, I would suggest read that New York Times piece and imagine if it was your child or grandchild. Do we want kids skipping school to sit in a factory for 12 hours, sewing socks, or shivering in an industrial freezer? Is that any way to care for kids wherever they may be, or to prepare the next generation of leaders in our country, the doctors, the educators, and the citizens? Of course not. The fact is the quickest and most sensible way to address the labor shortage in our country is to fix the broken immigration system. Let's stop dancing around it. Let's face the music. We need to give undocumented immigrants living in the shadows a chance to be legal. And we should increase the number of working age immigrants in this country by establishing new, thoughtful pathways for workers to legally enter America. We should pair this effort with new funding to bring order to the border. That's a priority. I share it with our Republican colleagues who talk about that almost exclusively. The fact that American companies are turning to children to address our nation's labor shortage is a national disgrace. We bear responsibility right here in the United States Senate. We were elected to solve problems just like this. How many years have we been sit sitting back and saying the immigration system is broken, we've got to change the law? I'll tell you, more than 30 years. Employers are counting on us to fix the immigration laws. Employers of both political parties. So more workers can enter the market in a legal and safe way. Unless finally, Congress comes together to reform immigration in a bipartisan manner, these human rights abuses and embarrassments to our nation will continue. What are we waiting for? Let's get it done. Mr. President, I yield the floor.